Barney and I am on site in Chicago for ASCO 2025 and with me today is Dr. Sandeep Reddy who is Chief Medical Officer at Immunity Bio and Clinical Associate Professor at Harbour UC Ballet. Pleasure to see you Sandeep. Thank you. Might as well. So let's kick off with today's FDA Expanded Access Authorization the use of Immunity Bio's Cancer BioShield platform anchored by Activa. And that is to treat lymphopenia in adult patients with refractory or relapsed solid tumours independent of tumour type who have progressed after first line standard of care treatment, chemotherapy, radiation, or immunotherapy. So, Sandeep, please tell us some more and what it means for those patients. Absolutely. So, first of all, thank you for the question. Um, we're very excited about this. Um, it, you know, it's very important, I think, for the community, the oncology community, patient community, because for the first time, for the first time, we actually have a means to treat lymphopenia. Historically, we've seen over the last 10 years a growing body of evidence in the literature, um, numerous posters, presentations here at ASCO that I saw uh, that reference, for example, the NLR, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio as a bad prognostic indicator. Uh, people have looked at the lipi in lung cancer, which involves a prognostic indicator, lung uh, prognostic indicator that includes lymphocytes as a major component of this. So it's a well-known, well-understood problem, but it's a problem without a solution until now. So this allows us for the first time to actually treat lymphopenia. Historically, as oncologists, we would give Therapy, it would cause severe myelosuppression, and uh, we have to manage those toxicities and, and deal with infections, for example. But then came growth factors, and those growth factors allowed us to um, alter the course for those patients. They were able to get more uh, chemotherapy, which in some cases meant cure, so greater dose intensity. They were able to avoid hospitalizations related to complications such as intrahepatic fever and sepsis. Um, and have better quality of life because if you have more red blood cells, um, you can feel better. So now, we've, as I said, we've, we've had these growth factors for platelets, for red blood cells, and, and uh, granulocytes. Now, for the first time, we can, met, we can start hopefully treating lymphopenia. Mm -hmm. And lymphopenia, as, as I mentioned, is associated with a poor outcome. So if we reverse that, can we reverse that outcome? Can we change that outcome? And that's, that's what we're, we're hoping this expanded access and additional clinical trials will lead to. Absolutely. I mean, it's all about the patients, I think. Today. Correct. So let's focus on Antiva now. Sure. So what's the status of Antiva marketing authorization applications in, coming from the UK, I have to ask this, in the UK and Absolutely. the EU? Absolutely. So we're excited. We, we submitted these uh, late last year, both to uh, MHRA in the UK and and uh, they're, they're currently under review. Uh, we're in the process of working back and forth with, with those agencies and uh, I think things are going well. Um, no update on timing, of course, that's really up to those agencies, but uh, certainly no, 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 no stops or, or, or issues at this point, so it's quite exciting. Great stuff, okay. So what can you tell us about the sales momentum for Antifa? Currently approved together with BCG in BCG unresponsive non muscle invasive bladder cancer with CIS with or without papillary tumors. Absolutely. So, uh, as, as you noted, we were approved late last year, or uh, we were approved actually early last year. But one of the key drivers or, or, or leaders is the, uh, in the United States, anyway, something called the J code. Mm -hmm. And we were granted the J code in January this year, January 1, and that allows for practices or actually anyone to be able to, to bill more efficiently to Medicare or other providers. And so once that occurred, we're seeing a significant uptake. I think we had an investor form earlier this year where we showed the, the kind of intended hockey stick, I guess, uh, uptake uh, uh, of, of the product. One of the other catalysts has been the ability to acquire BCG. Mm -hmm. So again, through this expanded access-like program, thanks to the FDA, as you may know, there's been a, a significant shortage of BCG in the United States for many years, eight to 10 years. Uh, and 
and even I think globally as well, but in many other countries there are alternative sources. In the United States there's only one source of BCG, it's BCG Tice, uh, only one strain that's approved. And so uh, when you're using Activa and you require BCG, but there's a BCG shortage, you can see that to create a problem. And so in working with the FDA, we've been able to, to alleviate that problem by bringing in a second source of BCG, which is a recombinant strain of BCG uh, developed by the Serum Institute in India that we believe to be uh, at least equivalent. Uh, there were phase two trials done in Europe that showed that it was at least equivalent. And now we're moving forward with the trials in the United States to uh, also show that and hopefully lead to registration uh, of that product. But in the interim, at least there's an expanded access mm -hmm. so that we can bridge this gap and uh, fix the shortage. Okay. So, how about ongoing and planned Activa studies in other interventions? Absolutely. So, uh, the most exciting one, I think, for me personally is non-small cell lung cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, just come from a session where we saw that uh, one of the other, uh, basically, in second line non-small cell lung cancer, that's where we're, our uh, intended indication is, and I just came from sessions uh, that showed that some of the other trials in that setting have been negative. So in, in a way, it's been somewhat unfortunate. And as for this year, many of the lung cancer trials have not been positive. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I think patients can take comfort in knowing, okay, we have other options that are coming that are different. So our trial in the second line of small cell lung cancer is focused on patients who had a checkpoint inhibitor, uh, but then it stopped working. So they have uh, progressed after an initial response or stable disease. The reason they progressed, we believe, is that they, their immune system has lost that uh, capability. So is it because their T cells are exhausted, perhaps? Is it because the tumor has mutated in such a way as to no longer present antigen, so it's lost MHC, and it's now masked or hidden to the immune system? Both of these can happen, and they can happen simultaneously in a given patient. Uh, the nice thing, as we mentioned, is that if we have a lymphocyte growth factor, that actually stimulates NK cells and lymphocytes, and your T cells are exhausted, well, this is a solution. And so uh, we demonstrated in phase two that we can extend survival there for these types of patients. If you've lost MHC, all, all of these other T cell manipulators and modalities, secondary checkpoints, TIGITs, lag 3s etc., can be that they're not going to work. But something that activates NK cells is absolutely going to work because that's what the NK cells evolved to do, is to attack cells that have lost MHC or lost that self-presentation. And so we think that is the appropriate strategy in these patients, and we're excited that we're hoping it will be a phase three trial. Uh, intended uses and in, uh, intended countries are in Europe, uh, the UK, Canada, the United States, and uh, in Asia as well. And so uh, that's just rolling out, it's been approved by the FDA, going through the process in these other countries. Uh, and the first slides are actually open. So that is what I'm sort of, sort of most excited about. We have many other phase two trials, probably far too many to, to list right now. You wanted to, though. <laughs> I would love to. I, 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 could, I would say that you know, pan pancreatic cancer is of tremendous interest. We've got a poster that uh, we're presenting later today that I think, again, highlights the, the value of, of looking at lymphocytes in this context and that patients with low lymphocytes do poorly and perhaps we can modulate that for their benefit. We've got a trial in glioblastoma which uh, is obviously a horrible disease, and the second line of glioblastoma, being able to, uh, to add an immunotherapy component there. Well, again, historically, these patients are very, very lymphopenic after receiving radiation and temozolomide. So um, these are just, these are sort of the highlights, but the, the, I think our website uh, lists all of our trials, and uh, certainly for, for patients, we'd love for, for them to look at this and, and, and contact sites uh, as appropriate. That's very exciting, very exciting. So let's go finally for a general question. Um, what's been the highlight for you at ASCO this year? Oh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think the, 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 the plenary presentations were, were quite interesting the other day. Um, for me, there was a couple of interesting things uh, coming from sort of our perspective. Mm -hmm. right? so the first one was there was a trial uh, where they used BCG uh, it's an ANZUP trial from the Australian New Zealand Virology Group. They used BCG and uh, uh, 
compared that to BCG and rapamycin. And there was no difference. And you know, a lot of times when there's negative trials, we call them negative trials, people go, oh, it's a negative trial, and they ignore the findings. I think actually it's quite intriguing. In fact, the discussant didn't mention this, but to me it's quite intriguing. A, it tells you that BCG is really quite effective. B, it says that you give a little bit less BCG on some chemotherapy, you actually are in the same place. Now, it did require more office visits for the patients, but in a world where there is a BCG shortage, using less BCG could still be very meaningful. So I thought of that as actually being a meaningful study, even though it was considered negative. Um, some of these other negative studies you can learn from. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, it, there's been some exciting things, uh, certainly the, the addition of, of a checkpoint inhibitor in sort of adjuvant uh, uh, setting and in the chemo radiotherapy setting for head and neck cancer, I think it's a big win for those patients. Um, I think those are probably the top, but there are so many. <laughs> no, no, they, they really are. And as you say, it's the learnings yes. that are important for the Congress. Uh, absolutely. I think, we'll, for me personally, I, you can't see everything in ASCO. There's so much going on, but thank goodness there's a virtual ASCO. You know, people are sort of watching this virtually, right? And so I'll be catching up over time. Um, and these kinds of forums that allow uh, people to get a rapid uh, sort of view of things fantastic and so in the next week or so there'll probably be something that pops up and I say wow I had missed that you know and I think they'll build so the learnings will go on until uh, the next conference. Exactly. Thank you Sandeep it's been a pleasure. Thank you Nicole appreciate it.